death toll for media workers in the country. For James Ridgway, reporting the story of solitary confinement in the US has been something of a solitary pursuit. For nearly a decade, every week, Ridgway visits his local post office, collecting letters sent to him from prisons around the country. The letters serve as key source material because they come from key sources, people held in isolation in six by five foot cells for 22 and a half hours a day for days, weeks, months, even years. Well, when we started our project, there was, there was literally hardly anything about solitary confinement in the press, in the TV or um, newscasts or papers. The only way I could connect with people was through letters, through just plain letters. No phones, no emails, no real visits, no press contacts. I sort of thought to myself, these guys are reporters. What they've got to say is the way in. That's the way in. That's the way to break the security. And you've got over 80,000 people in solitary confinement in the United States. Um, I did um, experience over 13 years in incarceration, five of which was in solitary. When we mentioned these numbers to folks, they said, no, this can't be happening in America. But yes, it is happening in America. It's happening every day. Nobody thought about solitary confinement as something that occurs in the United States. You might have thought of it as something that occurs in totalitarian regimes around the world. But solitary confinement in the United States as a routine and integral and normalized part of our criminal justice system has really uh, been invisible until very recently. We're going, we were trying to do a report. We wanted to do a, a, a report. Okay, no, you can't go on the island. You're going to have to make a right. Go into this parking lot and just shoot back out that way. That'll take you out. Can we do anything in the, can we film anything in the no, parking lot? No, you can't, lot? you can't videotape here. On any given day, there are more than 80,000 people held in isolation in the US prison system. Some would say that that constitutes a big story. The problem is that journalists are not allowed in to prisons like Rikers Island here in New York City. They have no access. And with no access, it's the story itself that risks being held in isolation. Underreporting is one problem. Misrepresentation is another. Across TV and film, prisoners held in solitary, portrayed as 21st century boogeymen. And what's that, Mickey? I'm a natural born killer. Psychopaths. I'll have to catch him, Clary. Killers. Don't think I won't remember what your front steps look like, Susan. That's had an impact. A complex story of a huge problem in the US criminal justice system has been oversimplified in popular culture and in public perception. You know, I've met people who really believe that the system is balanced, that everyone in solitary deserves to be there because they're violent, you know, and, and but yet have never been to prison. So the only other explanation is where they're receiving these messages from. Unfortunately, there is still a tendency that prisoners in solitary confinement are uh, are portrayed as, as extremely dangerous people for whom there really is no other alternative, and that's just not the case. Solitary confinement units in the United States are stuffed to the rafters with the mentally ill, with the developmentally disabled. People are put in solitary confinement for having too many postage stamps, for having too many pencils. They are the walking dead. That's how they're viewed. And what can I say? I mean, you know, I don't view them as a white. I view them as a fantastic army of reporters. Now, a lot of them don't say much of anything, but every once in a while, you, you'll get a letter that has real information in it. You'll get a letter that has real information in it that's really valuable in terms of understanding how the system works.
Ridgway has been documenting that system on Solitary Watch, a website he set up back in 2009. He now has correspondence with more than 5,000 subscribed prisoners. The site has reported on every angle, every detail of conditions in isolation, from prisoners' diminished human rights through to their mental health. Last month, Solitary Watch published the most recent essay by Jack Powers, an inmate in Colorado. He's been in isolation for almost 30 years and has contributed several compelling accounts of psychiatric trauma. And then there's Texas inmate Thomas Whitaker. He was facing a death sentence. His regular writings may well have had an impact on the Board of Pardons and Paroles, which decided to spare him. Solitary Watch, you get first-hand stories of what these people are being subjected to. They have a tendency of humanizing the folk who are and giving them a sense of hope to voice their suffering to the public. It should make societies try to investigate whether or not this is actually occurring. Most reporters and most newspapers, media, will concentrate on the big bad criminal. So we try to bury him in a polite manner, in a six by nine cell. He's interesting, but we don't want him to get out. He's sort of a devil and he is evil. He's always evil. And of course, we have places like the Marshall Project, Solitary Watch, and even Vice, who have balanced that out by, you know, in injecting and infusing, you know, first-hand accounts and narratives into the conversation. Ridgway is no longer alone in his campaign to get stories on solitary from the inside. An inmate would spend... In October last year, Oprah Winfrey teamed up with CBS 60 Minutes to report on the conditions of prisoners held in the infamous Pelican Bay State Prison in California and the efforts underway there to reduce the use of solitary confinement. Sometimes years and even decades at a time in this room alone. Scenes like that, showcasing prisoner conditions, have also made it onto Netflix, Solitary confinement. HBO, Caged Animals, and the BBC. And it's not just media attention. Before he left office, President Obama introduced a series of directives and guidelines, including an outright ban on juveniles in solitary. It remains unclear whether the Trump administration will roll back on those promises or commit to continued reform. But regardless, audiences are finally hearing from some of the solitary voices. Solitary voices that remain in confinement.